All right, guys. It's like 98, 99 degrees out here. Uh, I want to shoot this video. Today I had a service call to go out and help one of my other service technicians. And we was working on a, actually it was an Infinity Series carrier uh, air conditioner. And the problem that he was having is that he got so concentrated on pressures that he really couldn't think outside the box. He just gets so consumed in pressures, and I think a lot of guys do. I can really care less about pressures at this point. I'm more concerned about this temperature and this temperature. This temperature here, with this blue hose, this is hooked up. This is actually coming from your evaporator coil. It's what sits on top of your furnace. This is the temperature of the refrigerant entering your evaporator coil. And this is the temperature refrigerant out here at this coil. We're all about heating and air. We're about temperatures. So we need to be focused more on temperatures. So when I got there, he was charging it, taking it from here on out. Uh, he had the coil disassembled, trying to check to see if it was clean. He was just doing all kinds of work. And the problem he's having is that this pressure was about the same as I've got here, which I was all right with. All right. But this one here, was 103 degrees. I'm sorry, 103 pounds. Alright. And 103 pounds that put this let me think here for a minute. Let me, let me figure this out. Hold on. Alright, so 103 is going to get this right around 34 pounds. Uh, or 34 degrees, I mean. So when I was sitting there talking to him, it's like, this is awful low. It's awful cold. Now, somewhere, I don't remember, it's just a, a thing I've been doing for a long time. In one of my classes, I've learned that you take uh, the indoor return air temperature and you subtract 35 degrees from it, and that's going to get you your sat saturation temperature. Uh, I've been doing that for years and years and years, and it's pretty daggone accurate. So when I saw 34 degrees in there, I was like, this is a three-story house, and I was like, well, it's, but when I'm reading on this gauge, it's saying it's 69 degrees in the house. And their complaint was that it was 80 degrees, or 85 degrees. I was like, well, you've got something wrong here, because this pressure is right, this temperature is good, this temperature, it looks like it's 69 degrees in the house, so we need to go in there and find out what's wrong. All right, so uh, we went in, and I had the same problem with my house. When I first moved in, I couldn't get my house to cool very well. And I want to go over uh, what I had found. All right, so this is my infinity control. Now, if you remember, my evaporate, my saturation temperature in my evaporator coil was 45 degrees. So if I added 35, that gets me 80 degrees. All right, now, one of the problems that I found out, I had the same problem in my house when I first moved in. Let me show you what, what I found wrong. Alright, so this is my living room. I've got supply. And over here behind my bike over here, I've got another supply on the floor. And if you go over here, I've got my return. Now what happens when you have a system like the Carrier Infinity, uh, it's a variable speed unit. Variable speed is not really designed to throw air very well, I guess I'd say. So what happens, it just slowly releases the air through the ductwork. It's at a much lower, slower speed. So it just kind of throws the air across the floor. So what happens is, as the air is being blown across the floor, it just kind of scoots along the floor, and the return sucks it right back in. All right. If you took a thermometer and you took a temperature right there at the floor uh, and you took a temperature at the ceiling, you're going to notice that there's probably about a 15 degree difference. All right, that's not good. It's called stratification. All right, so what you have to do to fix that is I need that air to throw out across the floor, but I need it to rise. So what I had to do is I went straight up the wall and I put me a 
grill up there. Now what I do, in the summertime I use that, in the wintertime I use that one. Alright, uh, I put a piece of metal behind that in the summer, I put a piece of metal behind that one in the winter. Right now that one's open, so I'm pulling, what I'm doing is that we're taking the air that's blown out across the floor and it's blowing it across and up. Alright. You know, the house that I was in today, when I walked in, I, mean, I can already feel the difference. I mean, my legs were cold. I could feel the cold air on my legs. But on my head, I was kind of sweating. It was hot. Alright, so I discussed it with the homeowner and what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and, sh you know, I think two or three return air grills. I let him go through and count all the grills, see how many we had to move. But I'm sure that's going to fix this problem. Uh, now we've had this system in for four or five years. We've really never had any callbacks on it, but he did say that it always stayed warm. Now he had a third floor also that was really hot, but this was like an old barn type house. There was really no attic. Uh, he had some turbine, them little spinning turbine fan, vent fans on the roof, uh, but they were just barely spinning. So it really, I don't think his attic's ventilating, so he's having some other issues, but you know, to get that, the main, the basement and the main, or the walkout basement and the main floor, uh, that was their biggest concern anyways. Uh, it was so cold down in the basement and it was so much warmer up on the main floor that it was just uncomfortable. You didn't like it. So I'm sure we're going to fix that just by doing them return air grills. Alright, so like I said, kind of remember that 35 degree rule. Uh, get your indoor temperature of minus 35 degrees. That should get you your uh, pretty close to your saturation temperature. Alright guys, so if you get a service call to a house that has a variable speed equipment uh, and your pressures are, if your suction pressure is shown real low, and that would be the first thing that I would look at. I would go inside, get a temperature on the floor, get a temperature up at the ceiling, uh, try to shoot for about five, no more than five degree difference anyway. It should be a, just a few degree difference really. Alright, what's going to happen if there is that stratification is it's going to blow that it's going to suck that cold air back to the evaporator coil well that TXV is going to think it's 69 degrees in the house and it's going to adjust itself accordingly all right we need to be getting that 80 90 degree air back to the furnace so you know just keep it in mind uh, I know when I replaced mine it worked wonderful the next day uh, all right anyways guys that's food for thought Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks.